Okay. What's up, nerds? Um, yeah, so this is my second time because my stupid uh, camera disconnected and that had my audio as well. Um, so we're we're going into um, revisions to the Samantha fixture. I've been taking my time working on this because I want to get it right. Um, the stuff's expensive, even though I'm working hard to make it cheaper. And I also want to finish this kind of thing. This will be the last iteration, I hope, on this stuff. And um, it's, it's very cool. Um, let's get into it. So since the last um, post that I made on this fixture, a bunch of things has changed. Changed very much for the better. We're going to take a look at the pucks and the cones and all that stuff. Look at that. So we significantly clean this up. We got a purge line going right through the um, the um, shoulder bolt. So there's plenty of room that I realized suddenly the other day um, to drill a quarter inch hole right through a shoulder bolt. Um, this is significant because it gets kind of complex. This is a push to connect some German fancy stuff from work. Uh, push to connect type connector, but things get to be a real pain in the ass when you're trying to build these in and also The ones I was using before cost $16 each just for the connector just so that it would actually work a little better than otherwise um, But when I realized I could drill the hole and here we I prototyped it out Here's the washer and the fixture and the, the shoulder bolt so um, This hose goes right through that. See how tight that is? quarter inch hole stick a piece of hose through you still got your uh, drive connector there there's still plenty of meat for the torque levels that you're applying just to hold a puck onto a fixture there and you know this doesn't have to be fluid tight it just has to get argon in at a higher pressure than the outside so that it goes one way out all the cracks and this is i mean even if you're good this is this is going to be the smallest of holes that it'll be leaking out of while you're welding if you're going to be doing that kind of work but check that out significantly cheaper and simpler and nicer in fact it, it's totally killer um this the the bolt does have some hardening it, i mean on the outside you know it's like a case hardened type thing so when I go to do it next time, I'm going to make sure I have very sharp tools and good coolant and everything like that for drilling them. But this was done with a dull tool in a rush, just a prototype, and I still got it through. So it's not like it's impossible stuff. I'm just going to set myself up for success on the next one. But this was, this was big. This really cleaned it up. Because of this, the puck got a lot simpler. Um... It got smaller, so we're using less material. I did size the puck in this design so that the thread, you know, these come with three quarter of an inch of thread area there out of that, but we don't need all that. We could use a quarter inch less or so, just enough to hold it on. But I drew it with an, in an unmolested state um, because that's fine. And if I wanted to cut down the fastener, to increase the the engagement of the cylinder here, I could. It's just that's one more op, but I've left myself room in the design so that I could do that. So it's it's friendly either way it's gonna be approached. So the cup and cone system has gotten very good. There I've got it dropped drawn with a push to connect coming out the back side so you can keep it tidy if you like. Also, these guys, I don't know if that was there. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I this these blocks, I was looking for a way to make them out of 80-20, but that, that wasn't going to work out. It's these bolts. You know, we want to have a nice bolt holding this on. I'm trying to have a lot of work done here, but I don't want to cheese it out. And if you notice the width, it doesn't get friendly to 80-20 down there, so we've got to make our special little thing. And then I've got this Delrin block, and it's held in with a couple screws there. And that essentially is the key that it slides on the Delrin for. And I've 
done a bit of work with tolerancing, so it's working out really good. And I also don't think that this might even get away with standard T-nut, T-slot nuts in this. I'm going to check that out. But I don't think this is even necessary at this point. Because you it was retaining this. And I've added the screws because of some other stuff. And we'll go over that. But isn't that cool? I like that. And there's a whole system behind this. So that, here, let's, let's open another configuration. Let's see. Does this, does this open up right? Okay. There's an EC35 in there. I flipped the configuration here. I do very short head tubes on my mountain bike and all road, 85 millimeters. So I have to do some stuff down at the bottom, but the, this plate is designed so you can use it in either way. And then the IS56, if you notice, I'm, I'm referencing the chamfer that the head, head bearings engage with, not the outside, what I call the skirt of the headset that actually isn't doing anything. It's just keeping mud out, essentially. Um, let's see, we've got a ZS44. ZS44, of course, does use that bottom as a reference. Um, head tube top, so we get into the cones. And I've got some cones there. I like the very shallow angle. I think this cone will work for zero... Uh, oh, sorry, IS41 and uh, EC ZS44. Yeah, I think those are the primary ones for head tube top. Um, let's see, seat tube optimized cone. There's another one right there. And this is for 27.2 to 35. And we're trying to keep that angle as shallow as we can for the most support. And... I don't know, I think that's it for that. Anyway, so it's a well thought out system. It all works the same. They have the same basic heights and engagement and everything like that. So the cones are cool. All right, um, I'll save that. I don't like having to save everything all the time when I'm showing. Um, it's show and tell, not show and save, right? Okay, so. Let's get into the bottom rails. No, I'm going to do the bottom rails. Okay, again, most of these modifications were done to make it simpler, easier, cheaper, all that sort of stuff. Here, let's. Uh, um, so this part here is a Build Pro bolt. It's very similar to a shoulder bolt, but they have a flat there that's designed for their tables. So you can do a countersunk fastener on a table. And then it's got a half inch 13 thread there. And these are, of course, five, six, five ace. Um, so that's an off the shelf product. Um, we're always trying to use that kind of stuff like this off the shelf cost. I don't know, four dollars and 50 cents with a nut and all that stuff. So it's it's cheaper than having custom stuff made. And then, of course, it'll go into these threaded adapters. And I decided, screw it. These things make life so much easier. Just go for it. And I designed all around these things. So these are a little bit more expensive. But, you know, you just get as many as you need and you're done. And, again, all these little parts here, the store-bought stuff, they're generally going to work for all kinds of other setups. I mean, this is that's what's so cool about this type of fixture and the way I'm approaching Samantha is if a if a job comes up that's going to make you some money or be cool or rad or you want to do and you can break down half your frame fixture for and use all those Lego parts to build a whole new setup that's really dope like that's what this is all about we don't want to spend money just to have it sit there and take up shop space we want to spend money and have it working or ha so possibly solve a problem so now we've got 8020 that has a simple two-step process here um, three if you count the chamfer and then if you know hopefully you've got the ability to do this on a mill to have them very accurately spaced apart and then you've got this rail configuration and now we've adapted 8020 to the table now let's see on the reverse 
Oh, I guess we got to save that. I'm going to have to do that each time. So the reverse side, it gets even more cool. Um, <clears throat> so right now we have to we have to go table to 80-20, and then we have to do the same thing from the top table down to 80-20, and then we have to go 80-20 to 80-20. Um, now you'd think there's a lot of tolerance stack up here, and you know I think once you're done with a, an initial calibration, you're fine. Um, Let's go into this. Okay, so here's a slide table, and these countersunk like pin things, they are custom. Those are pins that have to be made for this, um, and they go and they can make it so you can do a quarter twenty through, and that will bind this in a fixed position. There's a a a Five eighths uh, bore done into the eighty back side of the eighty twenty, and then we're going to use a reversed a reverse T slot nut uh, to hold that in. Um, so that connects an eighty twenty rail to this from the back side, and then we're facing down with our slot, and at the ends we use the same. Fastener, so we're going to have a, a bulk of them made, and this will make it so that you can clamp in the slide. But these are just clamping; they're not doing any positioning. What's doing the positioning on the slide are these Delrin T nut guide things. You can see they're they're actually fastened from the other side. I'm using the T slot as a V slot from the back side, and that very and I and I did prototype this. Um, earlier and, and and I've done some work on this so this works I've, I'm all I'm all good on that um, and they stay in position and notice how, how they're spread apart like they're essentially on center about six and a quarter inches apart um, and I'm probably gonna make provisions to put more in here just for more more oomph and durability on that front uh, but I don't want to bind it up too much Notice the top doesn't need it. It just has the clamp and the and an attachment because we're only referencing one rail because, you know, you don't want to over-constrain. Um, and if you notice over here, the the pivot for the for the slide is held on by the, by the, the shoulder bolt. And this is the cosine pin for measuring the angle. And notice that's constructed... Just like the uh, the 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 pucks for the for the cones and everything like that, so you know you got a very similar interface consistently coming up. Um, that's the thing we're trying to make this consistent. So this this starts getting very simple now. A lot of like some very primitive parts. These lathe turned parts. You know you order a bag of forty of them for I don't know. 200 bucks and you're done on that front so whenever you see those think oh done because you know that's an easy bulk item so massive simplification what happened also because i was doing those spring-loaded pin thing slides and the reason one of the things that convinced me to go the route of doing the stacked 80 20 type thing was if you notice, I've opened up all these pin positions that would have otherwise been taken up by that locating system. So we would have ended up with a breadboard that was full, essentially, just a couple situations. And now we've significantly opened up that breadboard. So we got a lot for going down this road. You know, it starts stacking a little higher. But, you know, this is a very rigid construction, so we're not too concerned about that height. Um... I mean, I want to keep it down, but um, let's see what's going on up here. We're doing pretty good. We've got these types of things, the reverse things. We talked about those before. Let's go to this end. Okay, so let's look at the tower. So on the tower, I... 
I was kind of getting a little too fancy for myself, and I haven't updated this with the plumbing, like the through plumbing. I think I'm going to do the same thing. It makes life easier. So I was going to do this like ring and adapters and all this stuff to that'll compress and hold it together and everything like that. And I kind of got got brought to my senses on that. I'm going to do it similar to. Um, how I did it on the Cyberdyne with the change here. If you notice, okay, here's the shaft coming down. It's a one inch shaft, and this is just an aluminum block now with some set screws to unitize that and make it extra rigid. I'm probably just going to send some stuff in, some tubing in there. The quick disconnect, it's, it's nice, but you know, these are expensive. And does it really provide the value? Uh, are we really quick disconnecting all the time or whatever? And, you know, we can get away with something else. But, okay, this is what's also cool and new. So now, you know, I have to drill through this all the way and everything. But now, again, I'm coming in with a shoulder bolt again. And just like I am with the, with the, um, with the uh, cones. And this is basically making it so as it goes through the table it's it's a shaft and connected and i went through a bunch of options of threading into it and everything like that but it's it, it really caused a weakness in this area and by doing it this way i'm really overlapping where the strength is so we get that overlapping lego effect almost with this and yeah i'm pretty excited that this is a real improvement here um, and it's aluminum and it's one piece. It's not the three pieces before, um, up here. Did we do anything different? Oh, I stepped this down. Um, again, well, I went down to a three eighths thread here. So I tap it out on one end is, yeah, let's open this up. Let's see if I have the threads drawn. Okay, I do. So I have a half inch uh, 13 thread here, but I put in one of those little uh, little inserts, steps it down. Um, and what's good about using this is that that tap drill I can use to drill this out. And, I, and I do, I'm doing that on both sides. So now as I'm trying to drill all the way through this for my purging and whatnot, um, because we're purging is coming out here this ends plugged by the other thread but we have that nice big tap drill for the half inch 13. Um, and we don't have to go fully to that size in here but the thing is it gives us more room it really stinks to have to drill a very long hole like that if you're restricted to like using eighth inch bits or something like that so that that strategy is is helping to make it easier to make this part and then it's held very rigid so a bunch of improvements here. Let's just clean that up for putting it back. I don't think there's anything else significant to show there, but more simplification, less parts, more off the shelf parts, more, more rugged, more precise or more defined. And when we get over here, We've done essentially the same thing, same system, just replicated for the X, Y. Um, on the tower, I did make some changes. Let's see. Excel tower. Okay, so I added some 5 eighths holes on this side. I figure if I have this stanchion mounted off my table, I could do that. Um, I got this plate a bit thinner than before. It was fairly thick because I was using one of those cool nut, threaded nut end. Like it was a, what is it? It's a, um, a driving nut with a hex or whatever. But it was taking up a bunch of room, and I opened that up here um, and made this considerably thinner let's hide this but to do that and and also it's a, a a male fastener going in here i've got my and i think i went down i was at five sixteenths or three eighths and i went down a quarter inch on this 
So I'm quarter inch threaded rod into here, double lock nut on this to hold a couple, and now it can go in with a standard fastener there. I think that's a little bit better because then those parts are a little bit, be able to get a, a little bit higher torque and um, exchangeability and things like that. Um, I have the Delrin key in here. It's hard to see in that black. That's why I hate coloring things black. Anyway, there's a Delrin key there, and that's also held in with screws on this side. We've got our leveling system. That's fairly unchained, changed. Oh, and you notice this is, these, again, the same fasteners as before, um, same custom fasteners, and they provide the clamping mechanism here. I, I did some looking around on these on these handles and toyed with the idea of different sizes and whatnot. My goal is to have them sit flush underneath there. I guess we could pull that up. What sucks on some of this stuff, and this has to do with the handles, is I, I thought I was going to get away with a full regular countersink there for the... Um, the socket head cap screw but here we go oh where's that stuff okay uh. <laughs> so we do our homework i was unsure so in my last mcmaster order i ordered some of those levers as i'm going to use here they are. Here's the pieces. Whoops, it's got the screw in there. Um, and what's the shame about this, and it's counter to the model that's supplied, if you notice, this shoulder here is not as deep as the model would purport. I think the model's drawn in a full extension position, but not in the, the low position where it would na natively be. So if I am using the handles, I need to stack these washers underneath. And that's so that when I do use a cap screw, I can um, have a flush top there. So that that was a real letdown. I was really bummed about that. But once I'm on the ground, I'll figure that out once it's made. Um, but I mean that's the thing we I, I've I really have done the looking into all this stuff and making sure, or at least as much as I can without custom parts being fabricated. Okay, let's close this up. But yeah, that was cool there. Added a bunch of pins here, so I have lots of resolution for different heights off that table for other things. Oh, what did I come to my senses on when I did this? So, I can't remember which one's which. Oh, yeah. This one here is for the 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 um, calibration screws. And these ones here can be used on the table or whatnot in a different configuration of some sort. So, I'm figuring if I'm going to make this shit... And it's going to be CNC cut. I'm going to give myself a lot of outs. And gosh, you know, this is the problem with, <laughs> you know, keeping it simple um, is that it doesn't look very impressive. Um, in fact, it's the goal is the opposite. Oh, I'm still messing with that. I forgot. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm diddling around with that, trying to make a something work a little bit better and open up some options in here um that's kind of like i don't know i think i need to just give up on that um there it is so if you think about it the the slides for the 8020 right here and those little uh, machined uh the 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 turned little parts there are primarily the the only series oh wait and and the tower parts here are the only significant cnc parts everything else can be done manually um and yeah i'm i'm, I'm getting real close on this but i just wanted to show that 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 the progress hasn't stopped 
it has gotten simpler and more refined in the time it sat there. And by the time I, I place orders for parts, um, I'm going to fe be feeling very good that I've double-checked everything as much as I can. Um, all right, so there you go, Samantha. It's it's It just gets better. But those cones are dope. I think most people would be wise to... Uh, uh, copy that kind of design. Oh wait, I should I should go to this. Hold on, let's let's go to that. Um, if we go to the cone assembly, one of the nice things, especially about using these um, shoulder bolts, is we can use a larger lug here. So this is for one and a half inch lug. Say you were going to go through a um, a full size, I, I use those low profile 8020s, but a full thickness 8020, boom, there you go. And I mean, th to do this, all you gotta do is just send a, send a, a 5 eighths end mill straight through and feed it like it's a boring bar and you get a beautiful cut. It's that simple. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's dumb easy. Um, and if you, let's say you were gonna go on a, like a half inch plate, you had some plate sticking out, you do that too. Um, so everything's pretty much all set in various configurations. You just change out your 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 uh, shoulder bolt. And now you're mounting it with purge rigidly, precisely on whatever you have in front of you or just directly to the tabletop too. So that that is completely an option as well for another type of cone set up on your table. So yeah, this is cool stuff. I'm, I'm, I've been look, I've been redesigning or designing a road bike for my wife lately. So my head's a little out of the fixture game. But I had promised to do this update for a while, and uh, yeah, it's cool. All right. So thanks for staying tuned. And uh, there we go. I'll stop recording. <laughs>